Hey traders, Marcello here, founder of the Day Trading Academy, co-founder of Speed Up Trader. Uh, getting a lot of questions in regards to the market crash in the last three or four days. So I wanted to do a quick video just explaining to you why this actually happened so you understand. So we, we have a situation now where the majority of the movement that we've seen since the big crash that we had in March, if you remember when oil went negative, right? Right when we had kind of that, uh, the coronavirus pandemic and, and the, the shutdowns rising pretty significantly, we had a situation where the governments in the world decided to help out, let's say. Now, putting the pandemic aside, whether you agree with it or not, you know, because of the, the new numbers that are coming out from the CDC saying that only 6% of the actual deaths are attributed to COVID, doesn't matter whether, you know, it's real or it's not, doesn't matter. It happened. They shut everything down. So now what's, what's happening is the governments have decided to help the economy out, not only by just giving free money to everybody, right? Thank you, Uncle Sam. But they've also decided to make sure that the economies, quote unquote, don't fail by injecting money into the not only the stock market, but also the economy and the free checks with the stimulus and everything. So what this has caused is a very speculative environment, especially when it comes to stocks, because it's like you can't fail. Right. I don't know if you guys follow. Uh, there, there's a guy that's become famous because of the day trading David Portnoy. And he jokes around about how markets can't go down, how the stocks can only go up. And that's really been the case. And this is very dangerous. If you guys listen to the weekly recaps that I do all the time, I talk about how it's extremely dangerous because eventually when the market does go down, then everybody's caught in the trap because they just think they can go up. You know, we had situations, for example, where we had Hertz that went bankrupt and literally the market skyrocketed. And a lot of it has to do with a lot of, of millennial traders, this new wave, this new generation of traders that get into the market because everybody has free time now. Everybody works, one works, wants to work from home. A lot of businesses now, everybody, right? So they have the free time to be able to invest in the market. People start picking stocks. And because of the highly speculative nature of the market now with the government injecting capital, not only to the economy, giving free checks out to everybody with the stimulus and also also buying company bonds in Japan, they're buying stocks in the Japanese stock market. The market literally has just gone up. So it's like you can't fail, right? Hertz, I just mentioned before, went bankrupt, skyrocketed to the upside. And they, you know, they did studies where they showed that a lot of the purchasers were the, the a lot of millennial traders, for example, from Robinhood which is another scam. If you guys want me to do a video about the scam they're running, I'll be happy to do that. I'm going to start doing a lot more videos on the English side since I, I do most of them now on the Spanish and the Portuguese side. But, you know, we had the airlines. Like, everything was everything was going to collapse. Everything was going to go bankrupt. They skyrocketed too because of the, the money, the, the stimulus that the government was doing. So what happens? Market starts to go up. Everything starts going up. Everything, even the bankrupted companies that sh literally should be at zero or, or below zero, essentially, right? And we have a situation where you literally can't lose. You literally cannot lose until the end. So people start investing in stocks. The market starts going up. Everybody starts winning, you know, uh, in the news. Uh, yeah, everything's great. Everything's going up. Everyone's 401ks and pension funds keep going up. So it's like you can't you can't miss. So then what people have, what they do is they start leveraging themselves. They start using things like options, which are highly leveraged. They start borrowing money when they buy stocks, right? They take loans out. It's called margin. That's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily recommend markets like Forex and stocks to be for beginners because you can leverage your, it's a little bit more risky because you're literally borrowing the money and paying interest on that loan when you leverage yourself in these markets. So because people start winning and they can't lose, they start leveraging themselves. And then once they start leveraging themselves, then the market goes even higher and there's even more euphoria. So the market continues to go up, record high after record high after record high after record high. And then what happens is, let's say, for example, something like on Monday when SoftBank, which is a multi-bajillion dollar fund, they're the, the people who invested big, big money in companies like WeWork, for example, that failed, right? We were already in a speculative environment before. 
they come out with a report saying, for example, that a lot of their big positions in a lot of these tech companies were closed. So then people say, well, wait, wait a second, you know, if they're closing their positions, maybe I should close mine. The market goes down a little bit. It doesn't continue going higher. And because so many people are so highly leveraged, then a lot of these brokers do what's called a margin call. A margin call is essentially when you have to cover your leverage. You literally have borrowed so much money to put into stocks and the markets aren't going up anymore that they start to go down. The, the value of your stocks, the value of your loan, what's, what's literally the, I'm going to explain it in, in a way of the, the 2008, 2008, 2008, 2009 crisis with the houses, with the flippers. You get a house, you fix it up, it goes up by a lot in a short period of time. You take out a refinance, you get more money, and then it's just a house of cards. Essentially, that's what happened with the stock market. The value of the stocks continue to go up w without any actual fundamental principles. It's just based on euphoria and speculation. So the market continues to go up. Once it doesn't continue to go up anymore, then the people that are over leveraged and are over speculated, they turn into a situation where they can't cover the leverage that they that they found with the broker, which is essentially a loan to take, take out to be able to buy these stocks. And then that's when the problem happens. The broker does a margin call. They tell the person, hey, the value of your loan can't be covered by your stock anymore. So you have to close your positions or you have to put more money. They obviously don't have any more money, right? Because this is speculative in nature. And then they close the positions and then the avalanche starts. And that's essentially, in my opinion, why we had this huge market. I don't know. Uh, what I'll try to do is put a picture here of, of Tesla where... I'll compare, you know, I'll, I'll try, I'll have my guys try to do this where I'll, I'll put side by side the chart of Bitcoin when it go up and up and crashed in 2017, was it? When it went to 19,000, might have been 2018, and a chart from Tesla. The market, it is, it doesn't just go up all the time and it can't go up that fast either. And that's essentially what happens. You can see now with oil as well, oil crashed quite a bit, especially yesterday, went down 7%. Over the last four days, it's been down a lot. And essentially now it's because now we don't have as high of hopes of the economy recovering. We have a situation where there's a second wave of the coronavirus happening. A lot of people are scared. The people are talking about second shutdowns. And so the demand for oil, for example, isn't going to continue to go up because if we don't have an economic recovery, that means that oil isn't continue to go higher because demand isn't going to go up. So then we have everything kind of hitting all at once. You see, so that's essentially, you know, the market can go, there's three things that the market can do. It can go up it can go down and go sideways, right? There's greed or euphoria. There's fear. And then there's indecision. We had the euphoria where the market was just skyrocketing to the upside. Now it doesn't continue to go up every day. People get in trouble. Starts to go down a little bit. More people get caught in the game. Goes down a little bit more. Even more people get caught in the game. And then we have fear. And that's why there's a saying that stocks go up or the market, I should say, no matter the financial instrument, it goes up the stairs and it goes down the elevator. Well, the last four days, it literally jumped out of the window because of the speculative nature of the market. And I know some people might try to, uh, let's say, degrade the the, the ability or, or the opportunity to be able to make money. But remember that we've had this situation happen in various different instances. It's human nature, right? At the end of the day, people want to make money without having to do any of the work. And remember, I always try to be really honest when it comes to these situations because because you can make a lot of money trading, right? I've been in this industry now for 20 years. I've been teaching people now for just over 10 years. I practically seen it all. I lost $25,000 in student loans in a month after I took them out. I was able to recover after taking on more loans. But I, you know, I know how this game works. You can learn how to be able to day trade. However, it's not as easy as everybody says it is. And when we have a situation where you know, you just could just literally like David Portnoy was literally t picking letters out of a, a scrabble bag and just whatever it came out to was just picking the stock and it goes up. That's when the speculative nature and the euphoria starts to come in. And that's essentially why the market crashed. And it's not just a stock market. Don't blame the big banks or Wall Street. This just happened with Bitcoin. Right? Wall Street wasn't invested in Bitcoin. We had that bubble, the biggest bubble of all time. 
Before that, we had the 2008-2009 crash, the real estate, right? And before that, we've had other things too. We've had the, um, the tulip mania, which was the biggest bubble that popped of all time before Bitcoin did it, right? So people were, were speculating on tulips, literally the flowers in Europe. So if it's not going to be one thing, it's going to be another. And that's essentially human nature. Just if you are in the markets... Uh, over the long haul, you probably should be okay. But that's part of the reason why I do recommend markets like futures, for example, where you can make money on both sides. It's a little bit more simple. The risk isn't as high because you don't have to borrow money to be able to leverage yourself. But just remember that you can make a lot of money in this business, but you can also lose a lot of money as well. So be very careful with the mentality of you, you can't lose because I've said it in the recaps that I do weekly that uh, when the market does go down, that's when you're going to get caught. And that's what happened in this situation. A lot of people basically got caught with their pants down. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to leave uh, uh, all your questions with hashtag Ask Marcello. Don't forget to subscribe here on the channel. And don't forget to leave your like there on the YouTube channel, on the YouTube video, I should say, or on Instagram because it helps a lot with the, uh, with the algorithm. So we'll see you next time.